Hey everybody, I am John Merritt from BornToProduce.com and anybody who has been using Cubase Elements, Cubase AI or Cubase LE will soon come to realize after using it for a bit that it's very limited in what it can do compared to sort of like the artist and pro versions of Cubase. So in this short series of lessons, I am actually gonna take you through some third party instruments which basically allow you to use Cubase as if it had some of the pro features. The first thing we're gonna talk about is side chaining because it's such a vital part part of sort of mixing any modern music. Then we're going to talk about stereo delay, uh, vocal tuning, saturation, distortion, and a couple of other things which are going to be really helpful for you guys using Cubase Elements, AI, or LE. So let's get on with it. So first off, we're going to look at the easiest method for replacing the standard sidechain compressor in Cubase. And this is gonna work on basically sort of simple to mildly complex beats. So first of all, you need to go to the TAL site. So tal-software.com and look for the TAL filter too. It's completely free. And we just click the download button for the relative platform that you're on. And don't forget, of course, if you do use the plugin a lot and it's really helpful to you and you can, of course, afford it, then please do support the developers because they are giving all this stuff away for free. So you can donate if you want. Once that's downloaded, you can just open it up and then either double click on the VST 64-bit installer. You'll need the 64-bit if you're using Cubase 9.5 or above, and you want to install it to C Program Files Steinberg VST Plugins. Hit next and install, simple as that, it's all done. Or the alternative is you can just drop the TAL filter 64-bit DLL into the VST plugins folder. So with that installed, you'll need to go to Cubase and I'm just gonna load up a project just to show you exactly how TAL filter works. So first off, I'm gonna show you just on a very simple sort of four by four house beat that sounds like this. So this is a track that desperately needs side chaining as will become apparent when we actually put it on just to help the kick cut through the mix because there's a lot of stuff going on and it's all happening at the same time as the kick including the bass line, those leads. So we really need to be ducking the volume of all of that stuff to sort of make room for the kick. So we're gonna go to other, load up Tal Filter 2. So in order to use this as what is effectively a side chain compressor, we need to first change this from LP which is a basically a low pass filter we need to change that to volume and then we're going to change this to times 16. Now this means that this sort of graph here that you can see is going to be effective over one beat. So if I just play that we can see that it's just going over one beat so what we want to do is sort of dip the very start of that which is where the kick's going to hit and then halfway through basically the off beat, we want that to be full volume and then we just wanna have it full volume right to the end where the kick comes in again. And this is what that sounds like. So it's very easy to add a point, you just click on it like that and you can move it around and make any sort of volume fade that you like to get rid of a point, just double click it and it's gone. And what you do get is if you click on one of these points, you get these extra control points here which you can change the angle of the curve. So let's have something a bit smoother. Somewhere about there sounds pretty good. So, and it's as simple as that. For a four by four house beat, it's really, really easy. So let's move on to a different track. Let's move on to a drum bass track and I'll show you how to sort of set Tal up to do uh, an odd patterned kick drum. Okay, so here we've got a drum and bass track, which you might well recognize from the intro to our videos. But of course in this, the kick isn't just four by four, so it's not quite so straightforward to get the sidechain compressor or the towel filter working. But it is of course just as vital because what we do have is this bass line, which is pretty consistent and the kick. So when they play at the same time, you get a sudden boost in subbiness and that's not good at all. You need to be dipping the sub of the baseline. So let's add Tal filter to our sidechain group. So anything in this project that I want to sidechain is going through a group channel and I'm putting the Tal filter on that particular group channel. And what we're gonna have to do is figure out basically where the kicks are. And you can see as I move the sort of play head around, you can see in Tal itself, 
the playhead appear sort of where my cursor is, which is going to help us get everything in the right position. So as it comes with the times one, that means this is spaced over four bars. I don't want that. I just want to have it spaced over two bars. So I'm going to change this to times two, because that's how long our kick pattern is. Basically one block of MIDI here is just over two bars. So much like we did with the house beat, we're just going to bring our first point down and then we're just going to add in points. So we want this to basically the volume to recover after half a beat to its full volume. And then all I'm going to do is click where the next kick is in my project. Obviously that's it represented there in the MIDI chunk. And you can see that line up here in towel. So we know that is where the next kick is. So it's nice and easy to draw in our points. And obviously we want that to dip fully there. Oh, sorry, not fully, but halfway again draw in another point so it covers back to where it was find our next kick mark that in the project with the playhead and like so we're just going to go through and do this for all of the kicks and it should sound okay yep and that's so much better already you can hear that the kick and the bass just aren't conflicting And you can hear the kick sounds much, much tighter. And that's just because we're dipping the sub bass line whenever the kick hits. So that's a really nice, easy way of getting basically what is sidechain compression or effectively sidechain compression into Cubase Elements, AI or LE. So there is one very last way, which I'm not gonna go into in too much detail. I'm just going to mention it because this way is slightly more complex to do, but it does give you an actual proper representation of what sidechain compression is like in Cubase. Uh, but it is a bit fiddly. You do have to set up like six separate groups to put six versions of this plugin in that this guy Andre KR has made, but it is completely free. So if you do want it, then check out this video. It's got links to download the actual plugin, which is the MSCC compressor, and it will give you actual proper sidechain compression. So if you've got a track that has a really complicated kick pattern, maybe it's like a electronica or something, and you really need a proper sidechain compressor because the towel compressor just doesn't cope with the complexity of your kick pattern, then this is a method that will work. So just check it out. Uh, this video will describe how to actually go about setting up your project for this particular compressor. Uh, like I say, it is a bit of a pain. The towel filter is definitely the way, way easier way of doing things if you've just got a sort of simple repeatable beat. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you. In the next short lesson, we're going to look at basically a delay replacement for the Cubase stereo delay, which is really, really handy, but also easily replaceable with the third party free stereo delay plugin. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it. And if you're interested in more courses on Cubase and many other music production techniques and skills, then please follow the link in the description. Go to borntoproduce.com and check it out, especially if you are new to Cubase check out our ultimate beginners guide because that is our most popular course and it's also top on YouTube and on Google and it seriously helped literally thousands of people learn how to use Cubase so if you're new go and check that out we've also got courses on how to start with music theory if you're completely new to it haven't got any skills or experience with music theory and you just want to be able to write really cool chord progressions and melodies then we've got the music theory of EDM producers course and we've also got over a five hour course just on mixing skills alone which takes you from everything from getting the perfect low end to getting like a really fat vocal or lead sound in every single mix you make so that's it from me for this video. I'll see you in the next one, guys and girls. Thank you very much for watching.